Hello, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about my new batteries. But before I do that, um, I have a correction to make on my last video, which was my a monthly recap of my solar generation and electricity usage in which somebody pointed out that um, the graph I showed for the um, monthly generations, that's a day-by-day -day generation for my solar panels, was the July graph, not the August graph. So here is the August graph. Um, the numbers are the same as what was in the previous videos, those were correct, it was just the graph was wrong. So we still generated 578 kilowatt hours last month and had the lows and highs that you can see from this graph. Anyway, so before I go on, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, it's a massive help to the channel. If you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you would know that in August 2022 I had um, a solo installation from uh, Green Glow Energy, um, and this installation was a 12 um, panel array on a south facing roof um, with a peak output of 4.65 kilowatt hours going into a 5 kilowatt hour, uh, sorry, 5 kilowatt in solace inverter and a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery. And here's a picture of that in my utility room. And for the past three years, that's been taking quite a lot of our electricity needs. I top it up, the battery up during the night as I'm on Octopus Intelligent Go. And we can use the electricity through the day and with the solar. For pretty much most of the year, we are able to run on the cheap rate electricity. However, this year in April from Octopus, I had a 9 kilowatt uh, Dakin heat pump fitted with hot water tank. And to take advantage of the cheap price, I needed to get more batteries. So this video is about why I've had those batteries, what was the process of going through them, and the actual calculations to show why I think they are viable. So um, I had a slight problem um, with my batteries, um, trying to find um, a way to extend my current system, or my, what was my current system. So the problem is that I had a pure drive battery. And Pure Drive, which is a British manufacturer, um, have basically been brought out by Duracell. And Duracell initially brought out something called the Dura 5, I think it was, which was backwards compatible with the Pure Drive batteries. Since then, they've brought out their Dura 5 Plus battery, or might be the other way around, which is not backwards compatible, even though it looks like the internal gubbins are the same, and the software has changed, which means that they're no longer compatible with each other. So the pure drive battery that I've got and the original Duracell batteries could be expanded up to a maximum of five units. So you could have uh, 25 kilowatt hours of um, storage. So just before I had the peak pump back in March, I was starting to look at seeing if I could find some uh, pure drive batteries or the older Duracell batteries. So I contacted Duracell and they put me in contact with Pure Drive and Pure Drive did say that they had a um, stock of batteries for people like me, so previous customers, so that we wouldn't be disadvantaged. And they initially gave me a quote of um, £5,800 to have three more batteries delivered and installed, taking up my total capacity to 20 kilowatt hours. Um, and I was just constantly keeping an eye on other websites, things like Spark Trade or Sparky Trade or whatever it's called, to see if there was any coming up on there, which occasionally some do, and also on eBay. Anyway, I had the heat pump installed, and then summer came through, and um, I was, as I say, just keeping an eye on things. And then come August, I thought now is actually the time to start looking at the batteries. Um, so I contacted a lot of local stores over the summer as well, and none of them were able to give a reasonable price or be able to source those batteries even directly from Pure Drive. So then I contacted Pure Drive again, thinking they'll just accept their quote for £5,800, and they said they didn't, didn't have any batteries to sell or didn't do that, which was a bit confusing, considering I had a whole conversation with a guy called James back in March about this. So what I did, I went back to my original installer, which was uh, Green Glow uh, Limited, which is a company based in, I think, in Bournemouth. 
and you can see from my previous videos um, what my experience with them was like, which was okay except for dealing with one specific woman. Um, so I contacted them um, on the 6th of August. They gave me a phone call back um, a couple of hours later to discuss what I wanted and they said yes they had actually stockpiled a load of pure drive and Duracell batteries um, in case of this scenario. And they gave me a quote of £5,325 for free batteries delivered and installed. So that's what I went for and this are what the um, what those where those batteries are as you see they're just down to the wall from the previous battery so they um just uh, asked me um, a couple of days after i accepted the quote and paid the half uh, 50 percent deposit um just to make sure what battery i had previously just to make sure that the new ones were going to be compatible and they delivered those three batteries on a pallet on wednesday the 20th of august and then they came to install them on Thursday the 21st of August. So Glow Green don't do their own install installations. What they do is they work with, they basically outsource it to other electrical installers. So for this, we had um, Gone Solar, which are a company based in Porth Call, which is about 30 miles down the M4 from where I am here in Swansea. They came along at about 10 to nine on the Thursday. There was two of them. Um, I wasn't here for much of the installation other than them initially unboxing them and just pointing out where I wanted uh, the inst install put in the house because I was then having to do a uh, dance practice for the rest of that day. Um, but they just got on with the work, it was two of them, it looked like an apprentice and the main guy. Um, they put it on the wall, did all the commissioning. It's a simple process of just connecting up this battery to the previous, ba these new batteries to the previous batteries in parallel. Um, and within the pure drive software they do all the balancing and then we're charging the uh, units up so by the time we um i came home at about one o'clock they had were done and all signed off um so very happy with that so in my previous videos um some people have been asking me about why i've had those extra batteries do i need that many so this has been my logic for the um or my calculations that I've done for this. So my heat pump has been designed to run at efficiency of about 3.6. So that's a copper 3.6 throughout the whole year. Um, obviously it might be a bit lower in the winter, it might be a bit higher in the summer, but yeah, I'm taking that number of 3.6. So there's an assumption that it's gonna be 3.6 all year round. Those pure drive batteries um, can basically discharge down to 10% which means those three new batteries, which I'm basically going to be using for the heat pump, because the one previous battery is enough, along with load shifting, to, heat, um, to run the house during the day, for most days. So that means I've got 13.5 kilowatt hours extra capacity, which is what I'm going to base my calculations on for, uh, and I'm thinking that that 13.5 will just be used for powering the heat pump throughout the winter. So that means that if I times that 13.5 by 3.6 kilowatts of, 3 point, of the copper 3.6, that means I'd have equivalent of 48.6 kilowatt hours of heating coming into the house. And if I had a gas rate of about 7p per kilowatt hour and about a 90% efficient uh, boiler, uh, or combi boiler, that means my, to put that 48.6 kilowatt hours into the house, that would cost me £3.78 in gas. And that seems reasonable from what we had, we were spending uh, last winter. Plus obviously there's no standing charge, which I'm not taking into account in this video. If I was to charge the battery off the 7p overnight tariff that I have, that 13.5 kilowatts of electricity, or 48.6 kilowatt hours of heating, that's assuming there's a 100% um, conversion rate, would cost me 95p. So that means for every day where I use at least 48.6 kilowatt hours of heating, I would save £2.80. Um, you may be asking, but what about days when I use more than 48 kilowatt hours? With a cop of 3.6 and the usual tariff of about 25 or 26p per kilowatt hour 
of electricity that actually brings the cost per kilowatt of heating uh, down to about 7.5p which is what it would be for the boiler if it was using gas and 10% and 90% um, efficient. So in those terms I wouldn't be any better off if I had gas or the heat pump. So these batteries are purely to make me better off from these point of views. So that means I'm saving £2.80 a day. So I tr normally try not to put the heating on until mid-October, although a couple of days ago, we were still filming this in September, it was really cold in the house, it was down to about 16 degrees, so I had to put the heat pump on in September to heat the, to heat the house back up again to 19 degrees. So I've done two assumptions, or two, two calculations of assumptions. So I've assumed that um, if I had the heating running for 120 days, and on those, each of those 120 days I used at least 48 kilowatt hours of heating, that would, and I was saving £2.80 a day, that means that over a year I would make a saving of, or payback on those batteries of £335.66p. If it was um, a particularly bad year and we uh, were cold all the way through to the end of March like we were last year and we were cold all the way from mid-October and we had 150 days, that would mean I would make a saving or payback of £420. So in those cases we're talking um, over a 10 year payback on the heat on those batteries which is much longer than the usual solar systems, about six and a half these days. However, what I can also do is do a bit of energy trading, which I've already started doing this year because uh, Octopus have started, uh, have had access to electricity and been given the odd hour or two hours of free electricity. So I've been discharging the battery and then recharging them for free. Anyway, if I assume that over say 153 days I can export 10 kilowatt hours back to the grid before recharging the batteries on the cheap rate. For every kilowatt hour I export and then have to re-import I make a profit of 8p. So that's 80p a day so over if I did it over 150 days that's another £120 back on the payback. So in the case of the uh, worst case scenario of 100, having 120 days of having heat pump running, that would mean a total payback each year of about £450, or as I say, a payback of about 11 to, to 12 years for just those batteries. If I was um, on had the heat pump running for 150 days, saving that £2.80 a day, that would be £540 of payback, in which case the payback would be about nine years in the battery. So the batteries have extended my payback period, but it's more than that as well as about having the energy security for the future as well. Of course, it still goes on the assumption that Octopus are going to continue to offer me 7p per kilowatt hour um, for cheap import overnight, and also pay me about 15p per kilowatt hour of export. But it does give me some extra protection as well if gas prices were to have gone up or the standard price of electricity was to go up. So this the battery will save me a bit more on there. So that's been my logic and my thinking about having these extra batteries. Um, so please give me your own thoughts down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon.